Hello, I'm Lawrence Anthony, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get started with AndConc. Uh, first, I'll explain how you can download and install the software. Then I'll explain the basic layout of the toolkit. Then I'll show you how you can create some language data, uh, a corpus, and load that into AndConc. And then finally, I'll explain how you can use some of the basic tools in AndConc to analyze your language data. Okay, so let's get started. So to get started with AntConc, you first need to go to the AntConc homepage, uh, which you can see in the URL here, and uh, scroll down and look for the version of AntConc that you want to install. Now you can see that um, there are different versions for different operating systems, for Windows, uh, there's also Mac OS and uh, Linux. Uh, in the, for Windows, there's an, an installer version and a portable version. And um, for the Mac and Linux, they're both basically portable versions that you install. So once you click on one of these um, versions, uh, you will, the browser will download the software into your computer. You double click on the uh, file and load it as with every other um, sort of general purpose software tool you'll find. So just follow the instructions after you download the software. So, so while we're here, I, I should also point out that um, you can see at the top here, there's a link to different screenshots that show the various tools within AntConc. So you can look at those. And there's also a link to the help page which is a PDF file, which um, gives you quite a lot of detailed information on how to use AntConc, which I definitely recommend you have a look at. And uh, you can also access the license agreement here, which is another file that you can read. Okay, and uh, just for a few other things, if you would like to donate or support AntConc, Anyway, you can click one of these buttons. There's also some frequently asked questions with the answers to those and some other information, including video tutorial supports uh, and uh, how to cite and reference AnConc in any research paper. Okay, so what do you do once you've downloaded and installed AnConc? Well, let's look at that now. So once you've downloaded and installed AntConc, and um, you can go to your start menu in Windows or your launchpad in uh, Mac OS uh, or the folder in Linux, and just double click and start the program. And you can see that once it launches, it looks something like this. Now, for these video demonstrations and tutorials, I'm going to increase the font size of the tool so that it's a little bit easier to see. Uh, but you probably don't need to do that in your own when you are using it yourself. So I'm just going to go to here, uh, settings. I'm going to go to global settings and go to the font um, category. And I'm going to change that to 16 point, which will make this a little easier to see. And I'll also maximize the screen. So this should be now easy for you all to see. Okay, so uh, this is what AntConc looks like uh, when you first start the tool. You'll see on the left is a space or a window pane for the target corpus or language database that you're using. At the moment, there is nothing here, and we're going to load that in a moment. And you'll see at the top here, we have tabs for the different tools that AntConc offers, uh, uh, including a quick Tool, plot, file view, cluster, ngram, colligate, word, keyword, and word cloud tool. And as Ancon um, uh, is updated, you'll see new tools appear here. Uh, for each tool, the interface at the bottom of the screen does change uh, depending on what needs to be done. And I'll explain those tools in other videos in this tutorial series. So let's now uh, create a simple corpus or language database and uh, use some of these tools to see what 
the data looks like. So the simplest way to create a language database or corpus within Ankonk is to go to the file menu and open files as a quick corpus. So these files could be text files, PDF files, Word files, HTML files, and various other formats that you can read about in the help menu. So I'm just going to click open files as quick corpus. And then we have a standard um, file directory option here. I'm going to and I'm going to navigate to a folder of plain text files that store the data for the AMIO6 uh, academic English subcorpus of the AMIO6 corpus that um, Paul Baker uh, created uh, a few years ago. Uh, thank you, Paul, for letting me use this data. So here I'm to, you can see that we have many, many files. So I'm going to uh, select all the files. Um, I'm going to do a shift click option here, or I could select individual files with control click, or I could just use a shortcut like control A to select all the uh, files in this folder. Uh, then I click open, and you'll see that uh, in a moment, uh, and Conk will process these files, as you can see here, and then it says a temporary corpus has been created. The corpus um, can be saved via the corpus manager, which I'll explain in uh, a different video. So you can see here now that these files have been uh, loaded, and we have 161,469 tokens in this uh, corpus, and uh, we can go through and see them all there. Now, once we have the files loaded into Ankong, we can start using the different tools within Ankong to analyze the data. Now, there are many tools within Ankong, but for this getting started tutorial, I'm just going to focus on the keyword in context uh, tool, which is perhaps the most commonly used tool um, in corpus analysis. Let's look at that now. So the uh, keyword in context tool of Ankonk is the default uh, tool when you first start Ankonk, and you can see it is highlighted at the top here. And But we also have other tools, like the plot tool, the file view tool, and so on. So the keyword in context tool allows you to search within the data for any word or phrase or expression and see how that word or phrase is being used. So let's type in the word process and see how that is used in the database. So I'm going to type word process. I can then click start here uh, and we get the results. I can also just click return after typing the word to get the results as well. Now you can see here um, in the results table, we have the file name where the hit appeared. We also have some context to the left and right of the search query word. And also the results here are sorted by, and you can see here uh, at the bottom, by frequency. And this is the pattern frequency. So the word process appears in various patterns and the most frequent pattern that it appears in um, to the right is process of and then we have some other variations, process of taking, process of being, process of creating. I can scroll down and we, I can see other patterns like process that, process the, process and, and, and so on. So this tool allows you to immediately see how a word is being used um, in patterns to the right. And I can use a sort option here and sort to the left and then start again and see what patterns appear to the left of the word process. And we can see the most common pattern is in the process and then to the process as the process and some other variations. Now, the keyword in context tool has many, many other features that I could um, show you, but I'm, I'll leave those to a different video and I'll stop here and uh, hope that you can get started with Ankong and start doing some language analysis on your own.